Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A wet start to the weekend with the local forecasters tracking showers moving through Metro Detroit right now. A big difference from the 60s and 70s we had earlier this a week. A lot of green right there. Paul, we're now in the 40s and obviously getting wet. Uh, how long is this rain going to last? Yeah, it's a cold rain out there, and we're going to see batches of this stuff coming through through the night. Now, we'll start with Storm Tracker 4, as you would imagine, and you can see this is generally patches of light rain. Probably the most noticeable rain right now is down here in the Ann Arbor area, stretching up to South Lyon, Northville, just uh, south of Novi there. You can see there's some patches of yellows. That's uh, more of a moderate rain getting into the Livonia area here. But overall, this is just stuff that's a uh, regular rain. The uh, thunder and lightning that we had earlier, that stuff is gone. So we're going to keep an eye on this stuff through the night. There's more to the south that I'll show you coming up in about 10, 15 minutes. But right now you see a little fog developing, which is anticipated in this type of situation where you have this air in the 40s over the ground that's uh, generally still uh, uh, very cold. And temperatures, the air temperatures are in the 40s right now. But the dew points are close to this. So we're not going to drop a whole lot more for the night. So our Saturday forecast, we're going to start off again in probably the low to mid 40s. But 50 is going to be the high with scattered showers and a breezy day. But Sunday is looking spectacular. We'll talk about that. And we'll talk about also some tornadoes in Florida. We'll do that in just a few minutes, guys. Developing tonight in Oakland County, a seven year old little girl rushed to the hospital after being shot in Pontiac. Happened just before five near Wilson and Edmond Court. Deputies say the child was sitting in the back seat of a car when someone driving an orange SUV pulled up and started shooting, hitting the girl in the head. She's listed in critical condition. No word on a suspect at this time. The fight in Lansing over what to do when it comes to easing the burden of high gas prices taking a new turn tonight. Governor Whitmer now saying she's on board with pausing the state's 6% sales tax on gas. This after telling the legislature she's not going to sign their repeal of the state's gas tax. Our Mara McDonald live in Bloomfield Hills tonight. Mara, other states we've seen already taking action in this area. Jace, that's right. Other states have already suspended their individual state gas taxes. That's what the Republican-led le legislature voted to do. The governor has already said if it hits her desk, she's going to veto it. I say it's a shame. That Lansing can't come to a consensus to do something to help consumers. Here's what the math looks like. The state taxes gas at 27 cents a gallon. The average price in Michigan is 4.19 a gallon. So if your tank has 15 gallons, you're looking at a savings of 405 per fill up with the plan the Republican led legislature passed. We like to go places. We like to do things. So for it not to be able to be figured out for us to have our gas prices lowered is kind of ridiculous. The state of Maryland did just that today. Good afternoon, everybody. It repealed its 37 cents a gallon tax for a period of 30 days in what is a bipartisan show of unity. After Whitmer refused to sign the repeal of Michigan's gas tax, today she offered her own solution, repealing the 6% sales tax on gas. The math on that looks like this. For a 15 gallon tank, the savings is $3.77. Now that idea was floated earlier this week to a tepid reception in the Republican led legislature. All drivers know is any savings at all at this point, it makes a difference. Every dime, every penny, all of that definitely matters, especially when you got to fill up your car from going from 30 to probably fill up to now 60. That's 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 crazy. That's crazy. Back here live before there was this push and pull with the legislature and the governor over suspending the gas tax or suspending the sales tax. Remember, Governor Whitmer sent a letter to D.C. asking Congress to repeal the 18 cents federal gas tax. Now, while that certainly is not moving speedily at this point, you could at least say that's being discussed. We're live in Bloomfield Hills tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Mara, I'd probably suspect the answer to this, but realistically, do we think there's a chance of any consensus on this from Lansing? I think that, Jace, you know, the issue with this gas tax is a small portion of an overall push and pull between the governor and the legislature over tax cuts in general. Mm -hmm. This hasn't hit her desk yet. You can't veto what hasn't hit your desk yet. So... 
could there be some back and forth? And if you give me this, I'll give you that. Sure. I think the question really is one of timeliness. When is anything really going to happen? Yeah. Back and to you. People would say the sooner the better. All right, Mar. Thanks. Right now in Highland Park, state police searching for a killer. An employee was shot and killed at this store on Woodward near Ford Street. Police say a person came to the store to cash a check and then shot the 54 year old man from West Bloomfield. It's not clear what led to the violence, but those who live nearby say they are fed up with it. It's senseless violence because whatever happened over there, it could have been worked out instead of a bullet put in that man's body. Police say there is surveillance video. They have some leads on the shooter as they search on the ground and from the air. Russian attacks are inching closer to Poland's border tonight, showing signs Russia is knowingly going after civilians. Officials say Russia fired six missiles at an aircraft repair plant in the western Ukrainian city of Lviv. People there have set up empty baby strollers at the city's central square, symbolizing the number of children who have been killed in the war, according to Ukrainian officials. Tonight, President Biden held a two-hour call with China's president, who is a crucial Russian ally. Obviously, that is something we will be watching and the world will be watching. China has to make a decision for themselves about where they want to stand uh, and how they want the history books to uh, look at them and view their actions. Uh, and uh, that is a decision for President Xi and the Chinese to make. At last check, 3.2 million Ukrainians have fled their country since Putin's invasion began. Here at home, a brother and sister who escaped Ukraine are now in Metro Detroit with their extended family. Our Megan Woods is live tonight. Megan, you talked to them about their journey to get here. Yeah, that's right. A seven and nine year old. They got here about a week ago without their parents. And the last couple of weeks, we've heard of families trying to get out of Ukraine. But to hear it firsthand from a child, it just breaks your heart. And we were scared. And at the same time, happy that we're going to go to America. That's the roller coaster of emotions Flavio and Aurora Gallipoli experienced as they made their way to the Polish border. Aurora doesn't speak much English. Actually, it was her idea to escape. She's like, Mom, I don't. She, she was already dramatic. She said, Mom, I don't want to die. Let's just, I, I want to go somewhere so we don't need to be here. My mom sadly remained there. They walked 12 miles at one point, sleeping overnight in a shelter. We just couldn't complain because our dad was walking 20 kilometers and he had four backpacks on it. Their parents stayed behind and the siblings are with their aunt and uncle here in Michigan. It's a close family. We used to go to Ukraine every summer and we have an apartment in that city in Lviv and so Flavi and Aurora are very comfortable with us. They perceive it as an adventure, and so that's how we were trying to present it to them, and that's how they, their father also. They're grateful Flavio and Aurora made it here safely, but it doesn't make watching what is happening in their home country any easier. It's rewarding, but it also makes us aware of any other child that is was killed or is left there. And um, so it's just like constant guilt for me. Flavio and Aurora will start school here in Metro Detroit on Monday. Um, but Flavio says as much as he likes America and he sees all the Ukrainian flags here in support, he does want to get back home to see his parents very, very soon. I'm Megan Woods, Local 4. I'm so happy for the children, but just it's heartbreaking at the same time. It's a, a great story that you brought to us, Megan. We really appreciate it. The innocence of children. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Can you eat those kids up. Uh, tragedy on the Detroit Riverfront overnight as a woman drowns trying to save her friend. Three women were near Alfred Brush Ford Park just before 4 a.m. Police tell us one of them slipped and fell into the river. The other two jumped in to help and were able to rescue her. But one of the other women, just 20 years old, died in the process. The other two women are 26 and 35 years old. Police say they remain in the hospital but are stable. The trial for the men accused of plotting to kidnap Governor Whitmer turned its focus to a key informant today. Jurors heard from Army veteran Dan Chappell. Prosecutors say he became an FBI informant after hearing members of a militia talk about killing police. 
Chappell says the four men on trial wanted to kidnap Governor Whitmer before the 2020 election. He says they plan to use apps and Google Maps to find her lake house up north. The trial is set to resume next week.